In this video, we'll take a look at fixing a firmware migration licensing issue using classic licensing with a local DHCP server and TFTP server. As you notice, we have a phone that's listing provide the migration license, contact your administrator. Okay, so we're going to focus using classic licensing to address the issue that we're seeing on the phone, provide the migration license, contact your administrator. And the specific technique we're going to be using is we will be using a DHCP, so local DHCP server, in conjunction with a local TFTP server. And this will be based upon classic licensing. Please be aware with classic licensing, you need to purchase a classic license per each phone. There's a white paper, and here's a link, that goes into details as far as the part number. There's a different part number for the 8800 series phones as far as the classic licensing firmware migration from enterprise to MPP. And then there's a different part number for classic licensing from enterprise to MPP for the 7800 series phone. So that's very critical. And then this document right here will actually go into details about that. And the reason you may want to use a local DHCP server in conjunction with a local TFTP server is if you have a fleet of phones that you've running into this issue of provide the migration license, contact your administrator, this may help you with the actual process of recovering the phone or fixing the firmware migration licensing issue. I do have another video which you do not have to use a DHCP server. You can simply go to the phone's web GUI and then point it to a local TFTP server. In this case, we're going to assume you have more than one phone, possibly a fleet of phones, and you want to streamline the actual procedure. Okay, so one of the key elements here is we need to have a XML file on the actual TFTP server that's going to instruct the phone what to do. And if you notice the specific phone I'm working on is going to be 8841. So I've named a file at 8841 and then a dash 3pcc.xml. And this file I've actually sourced from the phone itself as far as if you generate a debug level PRT from the phone, download it. And let me actually make a correction. The PRT does not have to be debug. It can just be standard notice level because all we're doing is we're looking for the configuration file. In any case, once you download the configuration file, you can basically strip out everything above and everything below the section that talks about the firmware upgrade because we're just focused on the firmware upgrade section and there's really only one element that we're going to be updating here and that's going to be associated to the transition authorization rule so where it says trans auth rule we want to basically identify that we have a local tftp so tftp colon forward slash forward slash the IP address of your local TFTP server. This happens to be my local TFTP server. You would want to type in the IP address for your local respective TFTP server. So PC running something like TFTP D64 application. And then the following string dollar sign Amazon Mary as an Apple dot lick is going to give us a variable. So the phone when it goes to pull the license file it looks at basically a variable instead of a specific MAC address. In this case, the phone has intelligence to take those characters and know it's looking for the 
LIC file, the license file that is attached to its MAC headers. Basically, when you generate a license file, you go through the firmware migration classic licensing. You purchase a licensing. You get a basically a um, a number that you're going to basically put into the Cisco licensing site, and that's going to be associated to the MAC address. And that's going to generate a .lick file. There'll be the MAC address of phone .lick. So in any case, this will basically allow the phone to be able to go to the TFTP server and look for a specific .lick file that has its MAC address. So this this is the key thing here. You want to make sure you have basically using this type of style for the transition authorization role because this will trigger the license consumption up for the of the phone from the t local TFTP server. And then this is going to be positioned within the TFTP server itself. And basically, as I mentioned, I've just stripped this down. So this was originally from the phone configuration file default. And then I've just stripped it down to the section that I'm interested in. And then we're going to basically have this on the local TFTP server, which we'll look at here in a moment. And then we've talked about the name. So if you have multiple different phones, in this example, I just have 8841, but let's say you have um, 8845, 8865, uh, 7841, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, you would want to replicate that for each of the respective models of phone. So you'd want to basically copy this XML file and then just change the name to those respective. So if you have five different models of phones, go ahead and create five different XML files. So it's just going to be a copy and paste and just changing the first four digits to match the model number of the phone. Okay, and then in my TFTP server, I have the license file. So this is a classic license file. I'm obviously blurring this for obvious reasons. I have the XML file we just talked about. And these are really the only two key things we need. I'm using TFTP D64 application, really easy to use. It's a Windows-based application. Please make sure you're pointing to the folder where the license file and the XML file live at. So if you notice this TFTP folder on this PC is basically in a desktop. So it's C colon backslash users backslash and this account I'm just calling user backslash desktop backslash TFTP. So just make sure you're pointing in the right subdirectory. The other thing to uh, be aware of is Windows Defender Firewall or other security software may block the TFTP server software. So if you're running into issues, please take a look at that and make sure there's no either Windows native firewall software or other security software on the PC that's blocking it. And then we talked about making sure that the TFTP server software is pointing to the correct folder or the firmware migration classic licensing and also the XML configuration files are located at. And then the next item that's going to be critical is going to be the DHCP server. So in this case, I'm using a Windows server as DHCP. And the key DHCP option we want is option 66. And it's going to, this is going to basically instruct the phone where the TFTP server lives at. So when this phone boots up, it will get DHCP address. So IP address, subnet mask, default gateway, DNS, but then it'll also get this option for the 66, which will define the TFTP server. In my case, it's 192.168.10.20. Obviously, for your environment, you would want to make sure this represents the proper IP address. And then the last step is we do need to reset the phone back to factory defaults. 
And the way we do it is we press the gear button on the keypad of the phone. We get a menu that comes up. We're going to select device administration on the phone's LCD menu. Then the next option will be factory reset. And then the next option will be OK. As you kind of see on the screen right here, it's asking us, do we want to perform a factory reset for the phone? Or in this case, it's just calling it a system. And we're going to say OK. And the reason we need to do this is if you just leave the phone idle there, it would really not do anything as far as the license consumption. And I did some testing, just power cycling the phone, just seeing if it would consume the license, it would not. So this is something that you would need to do. You would need to go and touch the phone and do a factor reset, typically not too big of a deal, but you would want to make sure either yourself or somebody's located at the phone, they would be able to perform this step. And then very shortly, you should start seeing activity on the TFTP server. So in this case, what I like to do is I click on the Log Viewer tab on the TFTP server, and it's very verbose. You're going to right away know if it's working or not. So basically, when you factor reset the phone, it takes about a minute and a half roughly, and then towards the end of the minute and a half, it'll get DHCP. Once it get DHCP, it'll get the option 66. It'll know it needs to reach out to the following server, TFTP server, in my case, 192.168.10.20. And then basically, I'll go ahead and take a look at the XML file, which will pull down. If you notice, that's this file right here, pulled down. The phone did. And then once it pulls down the, this XML file, that's going to instruct the phone as far as the licensing, what to pull down. And that's basically this. And at that point of time, uh, the licensing on the phone should be applied and you should not see the licensing error message going forward. And what you can do on the phone itself, so as you notice, we don't see the licensing error message. I hit the gear button. And now if we go to the bottom of the LCD menu option screen here, there is going to be a status product information. And then as we scroll down, there'll be a section where it has a indication of the actual type of licensing. So you notice it says transition authorization type classic. Be aware sometimes with certain phones, certain versions, you may not see this even though everything's working correct and that's okay. We'll take a quick look at downloading the PRT file from the phone in case you've not done this before. So we're going to web to the phone. So right now the phone, I've moved to a different network just to show you this procedure. The phone has 192.168.1.32. Um, I did not put any HTTPS. By default, the phone is set for HTTP colon forward slash forward slash the IP address. This would be the default screen. The three PCC phones do not have any default passwords. So we're webbed into the phone. And all we need to do is we'll click on Debug Info tab right here. We're going to go to Generate PRT. I'm going to simply select Other, Submit. And generally within about 10, 15, 20, 30 seconds, it should generate a PRT. It did. We're going to go ahead and download the PRT. And then the PRT will be downloaded typically to the download folder. To get to the default XML file, which I was using an example earlier that I stripped down for the firmware licensing configuration to be applied via DHCP TFTP for this video, all you would do is once you have the PRT file, you want to go ahead and unzip it. So we'll go ahead and use 7-zip. And then we're going to do the same thing one more time here. So we'll go into this folder again, use 7-zip. Extract files, hit OK. And then within this folder, you'll find the default configuration file, the XML file. As you know, you want to rename this to be the name of the model of the phone. And then the other thing I did also was I stripped out a majority of this. So basically, we just end up with the section that show, talks about the firmware, and we adjust the one line as I showed earlier in the video.
Hopefully this video has helped you with the procedure to address the licensing error message with classic licensing using local TFTP and DHCP. Thank you.